The next advice I'd like to give you students is to please practice the papers. The Board of Studies website for the old exam papers, go to your teachers, go to past students, anywhere you can get practice papers from. But don't just look at them, do them please, and take them back to your teacher and get them marked. You need that feedback. When my students get their uh, homework done and handed in, when they get it back it's got red marking all over it because I have written in things that I think they could have put in the paper. Not to demean them, not to take away from the value of their answers, but to encourage them to think, oh that is an angle I hadn't thought of and I could have used that and that would have been beneficial if I'd done that. If you do that, you are going to extend your answers, you're going to get better quality answers than if you just write very much in response to the question and don't think of how it could have broadened out. Because remember, as I said, a sociology, psychology, there is no right, there is no wrong. It is you being able to back up what you're saying that will get you the marks in this subject area. So on the day, we've finally got to the exam. We've practiced, we're feeling confident about everything. When we get into the exam, read your instructions very carefully. Think about your confidence, where you're going to go well, and start there, please. I've mentioned that before, but I do think it makes a difference to the response that you're giving people. We're not looking at essay style answers anymore. We are looking at information in dot point forms really to get the information over in the amount of time that you've got. So if it's a question that asks you to define, that's what you need to do. You can include an example in it and that will make sure that you get two out of two, not one out of two. So think about how you can maximise the results when you're writing your answers. So you're in the exam, you're writing your answers and you are starting to think, oh, this is not so bad. If you get to a question that's really worrying you, please leave it and come back to it later on because it, it's not worth jeopardising the paper just for that one that's got you concerned. So leave it and come back to it later on and you'll feel more comfortable about it at that time. Hopefully. Um, something might come to you, you might have a trigger somewhere if you've done your research. Now, while I'm speaking about that, when I'm teaching my students, we do the notes in class, we discuss them, we highlight them, and then I ask them to keep a summary book and ask them at the end of the day or at the end of the week to write those notes up in a summary book. So when it comes exam time, they actually revise their summary book rather than their notes. It may not suit many of you, but that's a system that I've found has worked very well over the years. And students feel well prepared then. And half of this is a confidence battle. If you go in there feeling well about something, you can usually achieve what that result is that you want. And you all want a band six, don't you? That's what I'm aiming for you anyway. I'd like to see you get that band six. Okay, so to the actual examples from the 2012 paper. And I'd like to talk to you first of all from the parenting and caring section, which was outlining the physical preparations necessary to establish, to assist in establishing a healthy pregnancy. Now that was only two marks. The key words there, outline, physical preparations, establishing healthy pregnancy. They are the words that I would need to underline to make sure that I answered the question um, properly to get my two marks. Now, we're, having a, we're establishing a healthy pregnancy. Think about it in real terms. The partners, there's not only a mother, there's a father as well. So they need to be physically healthy to begin with, don't they? So that's obviously going to be important to put in there. If they're as fit as possible, they're more, more likely to have a healthy baby. The mother needs to have a balanced diet. She obviously needs not to be ex having excessive amounts of alcohol, fat, salt, sugar, tobaccos, all those things that we don't want. She needs the essential nutrients. She needs to have lots of rest. She needs to have regular antenatal visits to the doctor. She needs to have those things checked during the progress of her pregnancy. You think about it in real terms, you know that. You know that through community and family studies, but you know it through your own common sense. 
One of the ways I've tried to make it more meaningful for my students over the years is say, what do you actually know? How does this relate to our course? You know they are the things that are suggested to have a healthy pregnancy. What does the question say? Outline the physical preparation. So go back, have I done all the physical things that I need to do in that? Maybe antenatal exercise courses, maybe those sort of things are things that need to be put in there. Now if you can put all those points in there people, you must get two marks out of two. And that's what we want you to do. The actual format can be dot point, but make sure that it's clear to the marker that that's what you're saying, that it is um, all those physical preparations. Okay, people, that's a two mark question and you don't want a lot of time spent on it. A four mark question, obviously at least half a page in the exam booklet and the one in 2012 was to explain the possible consequences to the mother and baby if these preparations are not followed. So in my mind, you then go to what was the first point I put on in the first part of the question was about antenatal. Uh, no, the parents need to be fit and healthy as possible. Okay, so you're going to write down there if they've got urinary tract infections, if they've got some um, problem that can be uh, solved, they need to do that before they consider becoming pregnant. That is the mother and the father. If there is a, a likelihood of disease to be transmitted, do something about it if it's possible. Because if it isn't, you can have a, a miscarriage, you can have an affected baby. So that's an outcome if the parents don't take that preparation seriously. If it's a household where there is smoking undertaken, the baby we know from research will be underweight. We know that it's more likely to have um, respiratory tract problems. So get rid of the cigarettes in the household. Make it an anti a, a no smoking area. They're physical things from the question before and that's what's going to happen, the consequence. The next one, if alcohol is mother, taken by the mother during pregnancy, again, we're going to have problems with the development of the fetus. If it's really serious, heavy alcohol consumption, it may be a fetal alcohol syndrome baby, which means that the brain cells have been destroyed during the process of the pregnancy. That is a disastrous outcome. And it does happen if people do the wrong thing when they're pregnant. Um, stress is another problem that can occur during pregnancy. Again, this can cause a colicky baby, this can cause a baby that's difficult to settle at night. This can be, a, a or during the day too, this can be an outcome of the not following those um, physical preparations for the pregnancy. Balanced diet not eaten, if the mother is over consuming fat, salts and sugar, she becomes overweight there's likely to be problems then, uh, can be so bad that it affects the mother and her kidneys. So please think about that as a, a damaging consequence for the baby. All those preparations that we talked about in the first part need to be covered in the second part. Regular antenatal visits, if they don't do those, if the mother doesn't do that, there may be a problem that could have been dealt with uh, which would, could mean that the baby miscarries. it could mean that the baby has a problem when it's born, that there could have been something done about. So that's a consequence of not following the doctor's instructions. They will check for iron levels, calcium levels and things like that. So if the mother isn't aware of that and doesn't do something about it, it can have dire consequences for the baby. Okay, so if you can think of those things hopefully you will get your four marks. The reason I chose that particular question from last year or those two parts of the question is that so often in our exam paper we have a first section that is asking a fairly direct question and then we have a second section where we need to enumerate. So make sure in answering that you do do that in fact. 
Don't talk about something completely unrelated. It's so important that you stick to what that question was. And although I was talking parenting and caring in that particular segment, it can be in groups in context, it can be on research methodologies, it can be any item of our syllabus content that's there. So please be well aware of the fact that you need to enumerate when it's an enumeration in the second part that you've followed the points that you've put in the first part. That will mean that you can maximise your marks in both sections then. So that's a very important point to remember when you're doing any of the community and family studies paper questions.